Uh, what I'm going to do now is basically this exhibit is broken down into basically five pairs of the rest of the hall. Then the restaurant will uh, will do the same thing. The restaurant will be uh, displayed historically. And so I'd like to talk about the five errors and highlight some of the pieces of the different errors so that uh, as people come in, uh, in the United States, we point out a few pieces. The first era in the Rascal Football history is what is known as the early era, and that is from 1890 up to 1922. Uh, the first football game ever was played in 1869 between Rutgers and Tennessee. And it was basically a college fad. It was a group of two guys from two different universities who got together on an open field. There were 25 players on each team. They had no equipment. They had basically a ball similar to this, a rugby type ball. And basically it was 50 guys on the field banging heads against one another, trying to take a ball from one end of the field to another. And the early game was very brutal. And everyone thought this was just another college fad that's going to come and go. But for some reason, other universities like that idea of guys getting out on the field banging against one another, and pretty soon another team called up and said, hey, we're going to bring our, our, our guys and we're going to play them. And basically, that is how the game of football evolved. It was an early player, and later a coach at Yale by the name of Walter Camp, and his picture's up on the wall, who basically took this game and said, you know, we, we need to give it some rules. And he is known as the father of American football because he defined some rules, he outlined the field in, in, into uh, what is known today as a football field. He added hash marks. He uh, established a line of scrimmage and basically helped put rules in the field. The early game, they would argue before the game, they'd argue during the game, and they'd argue after the game because there was no rules. He helped establish rules. And this was in 1869. Then in, in 1890, a professor from the East Coast came to uh, Nebraska at a school teacher. And he killed the first team in the class in 1890. And there's a picture of the early team in 1890. And uh, once again, it was uh, uh, Nebraska. Just a bunch of guys went out for the team. At, during the early era, they actually used several different names. You've heard of Bud Meters, uh, the Old Golden Knights, the Rattlesnake Boys, uh, the Antelopes. Uh, they used several different names, but there was one tradition. That is the oldest tradition in Nebraska football history. That is the first team clad themselves in scarlet and green. But from the very beginning, in 1890, the Nebraska team had always won the color of scarlet and green. And uh, even though the name changed early on, Nebraska always showed up in red and white. The first early star of Nebraska football history is a gentleman pictured on the wall over there by the name of George Flipper. He was an African American. He was a black hat. And some of the early teams refused to play Nebraska because he was a black hat. In fact, Missouri uh, refused to play one year, and they ended up forfeiting the game one to nothing to the people who refused to play the game. And George Bush is considered the first early star of Nebraska football history. Uh, it was in 1900 that a New England sports writer by the name of Cy Sherman uh, dubbed the team. Cornhuskers. The word Cornhuskers had first been used by the University of Iowa, and they called their team the Cornhuskers. But then they decided that they didn't like the name, and so they switched names and became known as the Hawkeyes. And Cy Sherman didn't like any of the other names, he didn't like being called Bowman, so he, uh, he called the team Cornhuskers. And it stuck. The university will like that name and simply voted shortly afterwards to officially name the team Cornhuskers. So from 1900 on, the team has been known as the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Uh, the early teams in Nebraska were sensationally talented, good teams. And a lot of people don't understand this about Nebraska football history. There's a couple of pictures over here that I like to, to, to take a note of, particularly this one of the 1902 team. And here is a group of the teammates on this 1902 team. And if you take a really close look at it, they look like prison convicts. I mean, these guys are rough looking guys. And the 1902 team was not only undefeated, but they were unscored upon during the entire season. You know, if you have to say the greatest team in Nebraska football history, it would be the 1902 team. The coach of that team was a gentleman by the name of Bobby Booth, 
And this is another highlighted thesis of the early Daily Nebraska, which is the official newspaper of the Nebraska Cornhusker uh, University. And as early as 1904, you can see the type of, of dedication and, and, and the way the early program uplifted the team. Even back then, uh, the university was very proud of the football team. Uh, as we go on into the history, the next highlight is a coach by the name of Jumbo uh, uh, Steen. Uh, they kind of nicknamed, nicknamed the early team the, the Steamrollers. And Jumbo Steen is the most successful coach in the history of Nebraska football from a winning percentage standpoint. He won over 91% of his games. No other coach has had that success of winning. Not even Tom Osborne and not even Rob Bayer. Uh, he coached for five years, and at the end of his five years, they refused to give him a little raise, so he left. And uh, uh, the last three years that he was coaching, they went undefeated two of the seasons, and in one of the seasons, they had to win five. Uh, the great player uh, under his reign was this player right here, which is uh, a person by the name of Guy Chamberlain. I like to refer to Guy Chamberlain as the great Guy Chamberlain. And uh, I'm going to talk about another athlete a little bit later on, and that athlete is, 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 is uh, uh, a person by the name of Johnny Rogers. And I do believe that Johnny Rogers is the greatest athlete in the history of Nebraska football. But if I had to cast my vote for the second greatest athlete in Nebraska football history, it would be this gentleman right here. Guy Chamberlain was simply the best of what everyone else. He was an unbelievably great athlete. He went on to a sensational pro career. He is one of two Nebraska players that is enshrined in the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. The other player that is in the Pro Football Hall of Fame is uh, Billy Lamino, who's flying over there. Uh, early on in, in Jumbo uh, Spine's uh, history, uh, the rivalry was uh, against the Minnesota Gophers. And also, it was under his time that, that he started a rivalry against a, a little school in Indiana. And that little school was known as Notre Dame. Uh, the Fighting Irish in Notre Dame. And early on, Jumbo Stein's team was as good as any in the country. But Nebraska didn't get the recognition that it should have. And that's because at that time, there was a very Eastern bias uh, uh, in football. The writers and, and, and the people who picked the All-American players were all from the East. And they could see the audience. All, they considered all the best players and all the best people in the East. The one team that did catch the eye of the Eastern writers was Notre Dame. And Notre Dame quickly became what we call the darling of the media. And, and everyone thought that they were the, the greatest team around. But when Nebraska first started the series with them in 1915, it was the Nebraska Cornhuskers that went toe-to-toe with Notre Dame. And from 1915 to 1925, we played them toe-to-toe. I mean, we, we, we had an even record against them. Uh, they would win one year and we would win another year. And uh, a lot of that was really started under the, the Jumbo uh, era. A couple pieces that you may want to uh, highlight in that case right there, there's an early 1917 and an early 1918 Nebraska Notre Dame program. I have a lot of good friends who are Notre Dame collectors. And many times they come up and they say, Bob, why don't you show me the Notre Dame program? Because in the 1917 program, the star halfback in that program for Notre Dame was a gentleman by the name of George Kipp. No one can get them. Okay? And he's also in the 1918 Notre Dame program. And in 1918, that was the first year that New Rocky became the coach of, of Notre Dame Fighting Night. So from a Notre Dame culture standpoint, those are very, very valuable uh, pieces of Notre Dame. And, and they often kid me. They say, you know, those programs would mean more to a Notre Dame collection than a Nebraska collection. So you should really sell me them. And I keep saying, no, they mean more to a Nebraska collection than they do a Notre Dame collection. So I'm not selling them. And, uh, but we go around and around. Notre Dame does have a glorious history. And, uh, and uh, that's one of the reasons that we try to emphasize a little bit of Notre Dame history in this collection because they're going to be visiting our state. And uh, the, early, the early rivalry with Notre Dame was a wonderful rivalry. And I'm going to talk about more that in a few weeks. But uh, 
on up uh, into uh, the early 20s, the Nebraska program continued to be very good. The early era basically ended in 1922, and there's a natural break there, and that's because uh, in, in 1923, the new Memorial Stadium was opened. And so the next era in Nebraska football history is considered from 1923 up to 1941, and we're going to talk 